There are some key factors you need to know about stones before designing your first collection, and this lesson will get you perfectly up to speed. Here we'll explore the different stone categories that all industry professionals refer to, what determines the strength, quality, and price of gems, and what you need to think about before you design or before you purchase. Let's start with the categories. The very first thing you need to know about stones is about the two non-scientific categories in which all stones and jewelry are divided into. Precious and semi-precious stones. Precious stones. Precious stones are gems with the highest value and rarity. Until recently, only diamonds, rubies, sapphires, and emeralds were called precious stones. When this type of gem is of a high quality and carriage weight, it's very, very expensive. Today the line is blurred because some semi-precious stones like rare opals, jade, or pearls have a much higher value than medium quality precious stones. Semi-precious stones. Semi-precious stones are all other stones used in jewelry that aren't part of the precious stone category. Stone quality. The quality and value of a stone, depending on its characteristics, is defined by factors like rarity, color, clarity, luster, smoothness, size, shape, carat weight, and cut. Prices can vary monumentally depending on these factors. In stones, there are often visible inclusions. Inclusions or imperfections, like foreign bodies captured inside the stone, which can weaken the gem's durability or affect the color, reducing the value of the stone. The more pure and rare, the more expensive a stone is. But inclusions aren't always bad. In some cases, like for rutilated quartz, they add value and character. The four C's of diamond quality. The quality and price of a diamond is based on four things. Color, clarity, cut, and carat weight. GIA and IGI, the most renowned gemological institutes in the world, provide certificates that are necessary to have when you purchase expensive gems, whether they're diamonds or other stones. Let's explore these four things more in depth. The GIA's color grading scale for diamonds is a standard used by industry professionals all around the world. The letters D to F represent colorless and continues with increasing shades of color to the letters Z, with light yellows or browns. The exception from this list are fancy color diamonds, which are very rare and valuable. Diamond clarity refers to the absence of inclusions and blemishes. This scale from GIA is used by industry professionals all around the world to define a diamond's clarity in a super precise way. The clearer a diamond is, the higher is its value. The scale ranges from flawless, internally flawless, very, very slightly included, very slightly included, slightly included, to included. Carat weight. Carat is the term used to measure the overall weight of a diamond or gemstone. One carat equals 200 milligrams of actual weight. The carat weight and the size of a stone are two different things. A one carat diamond will look drastically different in size than a one carat opal, because each gemstone has a different density. A heavier one carat stone will look smaller than a light one. Cut. There are some amazing cuts out there that offer a world of possibilities for your designs. So we'll dedicate a whole lesson to them later on. When designing, it's important to have an idea about prices and sizes. Here's an example to show you how drastically the price of a diamond can change based on the four C's. A one carat round diamond, flawless, D color, can cost around 12,600 US dollars per carat, while a pretty included one carat diamond with N color can cost around 1,160 US dollars per carat. These prices are based on a market average prepared by Pricescope.com in May 2020, 
for round brilliant cut diamonds. The size of a 1 carriage round brilliant cut diamond is around 6.5 mm in diameter. At brilliance.com you can find a helpful diamond sizing chart. The Mo scale. The Mo scale rates the hardness of gems and minerals and helps to tell you if they're durable and how resistant they are to scratching. The harder a gem is, the more suitable it is for jewelry. This is different from a gem's toughness, which is defined by how it can survive an impact or resist breaking or cracking. Diamonds are known for being one of the hardest substances on earth, ranking at number 10 on the Mo scale, which is the highest level of hardness. Pearl types and quality. Pearls are divided into two different categories, natural and cultured. Natural are pearls that are formed naturally inside mollusks, usually around a tiny particle. High quality natural pearls are rare and extremely expensive. Cultured pearls are made with the help of humans inside mollusks. Saltwater cultured pearls are also valuable. Some of the most expensive are South Sea pearls, where a single strand can cost up to a hundred thousand US dollars and even more. Here are the four main different types of cultured pearls. South Sea. These saltwater pearls can be white to silver or golden, depending on the type of oyster. Their large size and knacker, due to long growth period as well as their limited growing conditions, are all factors contributing to their value. Akoya. This is the most famous type of saltwater cultured pearls on the Western market. White and cream are the most classic akoyas used in jewelry. Tahitian. These saltwater pearls, sometimes called black pearls, have a wide color spectrum, ranging from gray, black, or brown, sometimes with blue, green, purple, or pink overtones. Freshwater. This is the most common among the cultured pearls because of their wide range of sizes, shapes, and colors, as well as their availability at lower price points. They're usually cultured in freshwater lakes and ponds, often with many pearls grown inside the same oyster. Pearls come in a variety of different shapes, button, near round, and round. Button pearls are slightly flat on one side, making them perfect for stud earrings or as applications. Oval, drop, and circle. Circled pearls have one or more roots or circles around them. Semi-baroque, baroque, and keshi. Semi-baroque pearls have irregular, non-spherical shapes, but less irregular than the baroque pearls. Baroque pearls have irregular, non-spherical shapes. Keshi are pearls that have been rejected by the oyster before the development of the pearl is complete. They're 100% knacker and come in a variety of shapes and colors. A pearl's quality is determined by these seven factors, a system developed by the GIA. Size, shape, color, luster, surface. The less blemishes, the higher is the value of the pearl. Knacker quality. Knacker is a substance that makes a pearl. Matching. This factor is important, for example, when you make a pair of earrings, where the right and the left side needs to look the same. Now that you've learned about stone categories and quality, you're ready for the next fun lesson where we'll explore the amazing universe of juicy gems.